Welcome back with me now, our senior correspondent, Krista Bradford. She's here to tell us a strange tale. I'll give you some background. Some time ago, we told you about Edith Bouvier Beale, the forgotten first cousin of Jackie Onassis. Krista now has another story that begins with this eccentric lady, Ms. Beale, but it ends up in Dallas's Dealey Plaza. Krista? Geraldo, it is one of the strangest ironies of the Kennedy assassination. This little-known story involves a mysterious Russian count named George de Morinschild, his ties with a Russian-speaking American named Lee Harvey Oswald, and Edith Bouvier Beale, who has finally decided to share her family's hidden secret. We all knew him. We all knew George. Indeed they did, as too did a little girl named Jacqueline Bouvier. As a little girl, an eight-year-old girl, she had played with, with Uncle George de Morinshield, and then he turns out to be her, her husband's assassin's best friend. It is one of the strangest twists to emerge in the JFK assassination mystery, a bizarre triangle that, according to Jackie O's cousin and best-selling author, John H. Davis, one that indirectly links the former first lady to Lee Harvey Oswald. Russian aristocrat Count George de Morinschild enjoyed a life of privilege until a dwindling family fortune made him flee to America. Soon after his arrival in the 1920s, the Russian nobleman made friends with one of America's oldest families, the Bouviers. He became a good friend of uh, Jack Bouvier, Jacqueline's father, and Jackie's uh, mother also. George de Morinschild was semi-officially engaged to my aunt, my mother's twin sister, Michelle Bouvier. She told him she would not marry him, and he was very disappointed. And I think that he always um, kept a sort of a well of disappointment that he never became a member of the Bouvier family. De Morinschild found it hard to accept the word no and turned his attention to another member of the Bouvier family, this time little Jacqueline's mother. She was a potential step, very much of a potential stepfather to Jackie. Uh, he probably would have liked to have married Janet, but in those days, Janet was definitely had her had a heart on a very rich man. The Russian count disappeared during World War II. The Bouviers thought they'd seen the last of him, but they were wrong. If the shock and pain of the assassination wasn't enough for the Kennedy family, there was still more horror to come. It is a chilling coincidence that the man Jackie Bouvier had once called Uncle George had become Lee Harvey Oswald's best friend. After the assassination, Count de Morinschild contacted Jackie's mother. And that was when she told George not to get in touch with her daughter Jacqueline because Jacqueline doesn't want to talk to you anymore because you were so close to her husband's assassin. Years later, after being shunned by his former sweetheart, the Count spoke about this bizarre coincidence in an interview. Here is a vintage home copy of that interview, shown for the first time on American television. Well, what suspicion could there be, you know, the, to, uh, that I have known the family of the wife of the president is just a coincidence. It's a delightful, charming family who have been old friends of ours. De Morinschild was no stranger to the commission investigating President Kennedy's murder. He had appeared before them, and according to Kennedy investigator Jack Baxter, this is what he said. George De Morinschild testified before the Warren Commission that he was close friends with Lee Oswald, that he had met him in the summer of 1962 in Fort Worth, and that three months later he had helped Lee and Marina move to Dallas. But he failed to mention the full extent of his relationship with the Bouviers. He also failed to point out that he may have been a spy. He had strong ties to the intelligence community dating back to 1942. And the plot thickens when you hear what happened to the mysterious Russian count in March of 1977. The very day that a staff investigator of the House Select Committee on Assassinations was supposed to interview him on the investigation of the assassination of President Kennedy. He was found with his head blown off from a shotgun that had been placed in his mouth and either he pulled the trigger somehow and blew his brains out onto the wall or someone else did it. I think that George Marshall knew something knew some secret that someone perhaps did not want him to reveal. 
Do you think it's conspiracy or is it coincidence? Coincidence uh, is my sense about it. It's like that award-winning play, Six Degrees of Separation by John Garrett. That we're all separated by Only just by six, six degrees. We're all, okay, cousin.